All right, and uh, we have the participants window. And let's get the transcript going. Where is our transcript button? Oh. There it is. Okay, so the recording is running. Um, chat, there we are. Now, chat doesn't. Where's our uh, record set, uh, transcript button or command gone? Which menu is it on? Um, oh, show captions? Maybe that's it. There we are. Full, beautiful transcript. Okay, I think we're now ready to roll. Um, the chat back up. Okay. Um, uh, Ron says he's had a has a problem on his site uh, in the chat window. Um, Ron, are you here? Yep, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Ron, how are you tonight? I'm very well, thank you. And I greatly appreciate some weeks ago when you also helped me with uh, my website. Um, it was invaluable your your help. So, um, well, well, that's the kind of feedback come again you because I've got hear. another issue. <laughs> and yes, you're welcome to return and go for another um, question answer, solve my problem sort of thing. Um, so, um, this is uh, I'm looking at your site now, investingforthesoul.com, correct? Right, right, yeah. right, right. Okay. Um, so if you look at the uh, first um, block, the the, the uh, square, sustainability in the spotlight. Right. You'll see, uh, so there's the, um, there's the heading and the, there's a, it's linked. And then 20 words down, you'll see continue reading. This is on the sustainability one? Yeah, it's on all the, it's actually on all the, um, it's throughout so the you're site. saying within the yeah. tile. Within the tile, pose. okay, that's the term, yeah. Or card, tile, I'm not sure. Does anybody know definitively which is the correct name? Is it card or tile or either? Uh, in any event. Um, Ron, did, Ron, did you post this, uh, the URL? Uh, yeah, it's in the in chat. Because I'm not seeing, I'm seeing nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, so I only made it to um, to oh, Robin. Right. I should have made oh, it okay, to everybody. Okay. Yeah, you've got to be careful with that when you do the chat to go to Shall look I, at um, two. And yeah, I'm guilty of that all the time. Um, right. Okay, okay well, uh, Drew, did you, get, did you get it? Not yet. Should I send it to everybody? Yes, yes, please. Here, I can do it quickly. Blue chat where we type message here. I've got it up if it's... Here it is. Guys, just to, to uh, there we provide are. a tip, that's, that's... one of the things that is cool about the way Zoom chat function works is that to get the URL for your site into a chat message, all I did was drag the icon from the address window of the, of the Chrome tab displaying the site, drag that icon into the chat spot, and bang, it creates the URL for it. And in the same respect, when you see a URL in chat, if you simply click on it, then it will open that link in whatever browser window is foremost in a new tab. So that makes moving in and out of the chat part really smooth. Uh, and I recommend that. Okay, so uh, we're back to we have so what we're looking at is the blog archive page in effect, I guess, right? These are, are these yeah, well, yeah, yeah this about? is the home page. Right, but these are posts, right? They, I mean, they yeah, these are posts, up. exactly. Okay. So we have a, a listing of posts, each with in a card, each having a title, uh, a date, uh, a, the text, then, which you were mentioning was 20 words or something. It should and be 20 something words. Read later. Right. Uh, I don't see that on any of the ones displayed. Sorry? what? what? I don't see anything about read. The, the read later or whatever language oh, you want to use on the reading. Button, uh, 20 words into it, you see, actually it's one, two, three, four lines down. It says continue reading. 
Okay, just a second now. I was just scrolling down the page. Uh, oh yeah, continue reading. Uh, that right. doesn't belong there. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't belong there. It should be actually <laughs> two lines down. Right now, was that to be was that to be a link? Like in yep, the form it, of, uh, it kind is of a link. Just, it is a link wait a to wait a the wait article. A wait a second. Wait a second. Was it a link made of words, or was it a button with a URL on it? No, made of words. Okay. And the words are continue reading. Right yeah. uh, now, um, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but right off the top of my head, I would think that when you have something like continue reading, a separate item from the text of the post. Correct. And it appears as we see it now. My first thought is, oh, well, that's a layout problem where that continue reading URL is um, too high or, or is intruding on the space or the, the part of the card that relates to the text of the post. But that doesn't take into account the fact that this continue reading has been put into the text neatly, not in the way that it overlay which would really one character, one word would lay on top of another and see through, mm -hmm. right? So right. my initial thought doesn't sound like a logical sort of answer. Um, can you display for us the edit page for this particular one so we can have a look at a tile um, within the block editor? Yeah, uh, um, okay, so... Um... So you should have somewhere like at yeah. the top of your page, right? Uh, edit page uh, somewhere. Yeah, an edit post. Edit post, right? I've been using the classic editor, so. <laughs> oh, you have that idea, I guess. But uh, well, no, just that it. it I'm, I'm used to the ease with which you can see layout issues with the boxes and everything of block the, the blocks that are sort of have right. outlines on them. I find that much easier to use. Than I ever did in the classic editor. Okay, uh, is there any way of uh, moving to it from this page, or do I have to go through? Well, yes, there's a thing? there's a, a simple process to convert the right. block, the the content of a given post into a block version of that same post. And usually, you get that option when the page is first displayed. You know, with a with a relevant, an appropriate WordPress version. Like if you're on WordPress six point three, and you open a post that was done in with the classic editor, you, the, one of the very first things you'll see looking at the new at the post being displayed is an option to convert it or to try to convert it. Now, if right. you miss that, uh, uh, so let's display the page and see if we get that option. Yeah. So if you go on the page, do so, it, should yeah, I just share do, do the screen? Now. Do, click the edit button and we'll see the edit view of the page. So do you want me to share screen? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking well, at the yes. page and I'm thinking, you know, just click the edit button, but that won't show to anyone. So please do. And, and Drew and others uh, jump in whenever you want uh, to either make suggestions or ask a question or to note that, that you weren't viewing this <laughs> page yet. Um, okay. Is it sh not shared yet? Right. The trick with sharing, I find, especially if you have lots of windows open, is to click on the window you want to view just before you go to the share screen so that that particular window tab is it foremost. Then it usually okay. appears in the top left corner of the display. Of, but you're there. Okay, excellent. Right. Okay, now and is I there- know If I go down at the bottom, I can get to, uh, oh, I've got- uh, Yeah, switch the block editor there there we are oh yeah right now the only thing is are you backed up are you i mean this should not be a problem but um the blog archive page is somewhat more complex than just a simple post and you might want to be able to revert okay so this is the converter version we are in the block editor. yep we're in the block editor okay yep. so scroll down oh sorry sorry um how do we get the current post a display um now there is a way to display uh, the query loop is running in this right in order to create the list of the posts right are you familiar with this notion of the query loop or what i'm talking about uh, no i'm not okay so what you normally get 
when you display a blog archive page is the block is the set of the tar tiles or cards, whatever layout has been selected to as the default. And the option is essentially to work with one single card or tile to get its layout correct, done correctly. So mm -hmm. they're working as you want. And then you just simply you simply repeat that. If you want four tiles, you do the first one and then copy it three times. And then the query loop automatically knows to populate those cards with the first four posts. And if you have, in your case, a dozen or an endless list running, right? Mm -hmm. Then your first card, I don't know how many cards you need to create in the layout, but that's the basic notion, right? So what you do is you work with one card, one layout or one post, get it working as you wish, and then duplicate it. Someone has their audio on and we're getting some sort of funny sound from it. Um, okay, if that persists, we can um, run it to ground. Drew, do you have any suggestions just in terms of how do we get that that first part of how the query block works so that we get the tiles to display um, because we want to work with the layout, right? The layout of one of the tiles in the loop. Yeah, that I do not know. Now, wait a second. It says your classic edit. I mean, we don't want classic edit. We want the block editor. Why aren't we getting the block editor? Um, well, you know what? Why don't we try... Uh, um, Ron, create a new page, uh, cre create a new page, uh, post rather, and we'll we'll build the blog archive out of it and see what it is we're looking for. Okay. So uh, go to uh, go to the uh, dashboard. Right. Top left corner. Second. Top oh, is uh, is that it? Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm not that. used to, as I say, the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's click that. Okay, yep. Now we want a uh, new post. Uh, yeah, I want us to do a post. All right. And um, I'll go to the, we want the block editor, right? You know, well, that should be running now. Oh, why? Is it, okay, wait a second. Default editor for the current user is, I wonder if we want to turn off the default editor being the classic one. Well, let's see how we fare here because it. I'm not sure if it changes the way the block editor works when you're switching into it as opposed right. to starting off with it. So let's give it a try. Switch to block editor. And go back to the top. It's still. Okay. And we want to type in, uh, um, I guess, query. Query loop. Okay, wait a second. We, we should be seeing choices here now. In other words, as soon as you start typing in anything, it should be searching right away. So let's do this. Let's click the plus button. Uh, delete the query loop text first. Uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. In the search, just type query. Okay, I okay, can title. Okay, the, and yes, click on the query loop. Query loop. Now, wait a second, wait a second. I wonder if post lists would be better. Um, Drew, what do you think? Query would, loop or post lists? I would go with post lists. Okay, post so let's list. use, let's um, undo that insertion of the query loop. The undo command is in the top left, top left. Oh, top left. Beside that to the right. Oh, yeah, 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 I see it, yeah. Oh, no, 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 up, to, up, up, up. To, to the right of the X icon. It's, it's, it's the, the left the, arrow. Is the left, left arrow. facing arrow. Uh, Robin. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, my granddaughter just came by. So do you want, mind if I just step out for about 15 minutes? Sure. Okay. I'll be back. Thank you. Okay. So delete the words query loop because they're going to throw us off. Uh, that was just the title, I guess. No, that okay. was supposed to be a block. Okay. So let's type the plus. Now type query. Now query. Oh, sorry. Right. Post. Sorry. It's post we want. Sorry, it's oh, post. post post list. Okay, well, anyway, I got yeah, it. We get that anyway. Okay, so click double click that. Okay, you're in there, right? And now under choose, choose that, 
click that button. And now we want to, we're going to get a bunch of choices. And why aren't we getting any list of choices here? Should give us, uh, there it is. Okay. So now it's going to give us different kinds of layouts, right? So you want to scroll through and find a card style layout. These are posts where the post goes from side to side. That's not what we want, right? So scroll down, scroll down to display more. And now Go. you start to see different layouts, right? Yeah, uh, obviously I, I don't want to change the layout. Right, but you have to find here in this set of pattern choices, a layout that suits you. And there's got, there's, there will be one that's yours is a quite vanilla one, right? So somewhere here, there'll be a simple set of cards that you can choose, right? So just keep scrolling. Yeah, I'm not sure that I want to do that though. Oh, oh, I mean, all I really want to do- Just a second, just a second, Bill, or Ron. Bill, okay. what were you trying to say? Yeah, I, I, I think that we need to ask uh, Ron Meyer, what did he start with? What created, I think he's already done this. I think he's already- well, what, what we're wrestling with, it. what we're wrestling with Bill is we have a blog archive page, the layout of which we're, we're, we're unable to access. When we tried to access it by converting it with, you know, so it was block editable, we got a pattern that wasn't similar to the pattern displayed. We got a pattern where each post was content going from one side of the page to the other, whereas Ron's pattern, or, you know, his current pattern is uh, four tiles in a row. And then I forget, probably a half a dozen rows of those tiles um, and or no, more. Th there's, um, there's two, two uh, across, two boxes <laughs> across and then it, there are i think a 10 10 total on each uh, right page. but that would be a, that would be something if there's a limit on the number then that would be something that you would um put in the settings right and uh now i'm just if you go back if you look at uh, bill the home page um let me just back to i just lost something here is, yeah, because no, I don't really want to change anything to the actual, um, you know, to, in in the theme or uh, you know the right, style. Right. Uh, but but Bill, what or Ron rather, what we're trying to do is cope with this problem that we're not seeing a display of the layout as it currently is on your home page. When we went to the block editor version the post layout was not what you currently have. So there's something wrong there in the conversion or something. Yeah, but so that's what we then said what, was, well, let's try just creating a new page. Well, that's why we need to go back and, and look at where is the page that creates what we were looking at first. Uh, okay. Well, we, well, we, we I, were there. We can, were there and looking at no, it. No, we weren't I, there. No, we haven't gone there. We showed a post, uh, but not that page. Can you oh, show us? Wait a second. That was what we what you told us, or I thought we were viewing. So yes, definitely show us the blog archive page because that's what we were to edit. If you shown us a post instead, well, then that's why it's not right. displaying what you have okay. on your own. All right. <laughs> that's a simple solution. Okay. So you can delete this uh, draft document or page because, or leave it for the moment. Draft, delete leave. it afterwards if we don't go back to it. Okay. So let's so just go to. Let me the, just go back. Okay. You can go to the dashboard, wow. then go to the blog, to the posts list. You have to clear that modal box before you can do anything where it says leave or cancel. Oh, okay. Okay, didn't see that. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, that'll stop. Okay, so now let's go to... Um, I, I think the easiest is, thing actually... No, no, hold on, it. hold on. Now, okay, okay. so it's, this is the page. Right, now click the edit button. Uh, yeah, exactly. Edit page, Where's edit page. Edit? Yeah, edit page. I, I got... Um, no, 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 the... no, 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 edit page, edit page. 
<laughs> no, the, the um, Zoom information is blocking out the <laughs> the link. Can you know? Because no, we're seeing it. You, uh, you know, I know you're you see keep trying to go right beside that. It says edit page, right? So I, okay, that says edit page. So click that. Yeah. No, no, no. There was information from Zoom that was blocking out that link uh, area. Okay. So now, um, scroll down a bit. So you want to go down to the block editor? No, just scroll down. No, a no. Bit and see if okay. there's anything displayed with respect to the tile in question. No. So scroll down slowly so we can see what's there. I think there's just, this is all metadata now. So keep going. All right. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything here. Okay, so let's now try the block editor. Oh, well, that doesn't make sense. There's got to be something on this page. Why? Because in well, the classic theme, you weren't expected to change the layout of posts in the blog archive page. You weren't expected to know how to work with the query loop component of a template. Okay, so scroll down a bit. Okay, uh, are we seeing some tiles? Yeah, it looks yes. like it. Okay, yes. so this is what we wanted to look for. Hmm. We okay. found it. It would be nice if it had some outlines around them defining sort of the boundaries, but um, now where is, okay, so there's the add read more link text. Hmm. Okay, so do you see that um, instruction at the bottom? Yeah. What happens when you click that? Let's just see. Uh, I wonder if I, nothing. Maybe you just replace it with the read more link text. It's already been added. It says continue reading. I'm sorry, where does it say continue reading? Oh, I see it. Yes, I can see it right in inside the uh, paragraph. Try the other uh, one. Right. So let's just delete the words continue reading from the tiles because that's, you put that in there somehow. Yeah, well, actually, uh, you know, I had, I had some Andrew college. I had some college students who were doing some, who were doing a software program, <laughs> put this together. Okay, so delete the words. I mean, unless somebody here thinks otherwise, my suggestion is delete the words. Cut. Continue reading from I all of the tiles. Nine, don't I? But there's yes. hundreds. <laughs> there's, well, yes, but you can do. You you can simply say, use the find and replace of the browser to look for that text yeah. and in one operation now, change originally all. though originally though continue reading you know had the link to you know, right but we clearly can see that it isn't the link now right and Plus, the, 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 it's it doesn't belong to 20 there. words the right. uh, wait a second wait a second it doesn't yeah. belong there so why I, so I, I'm sorry but I, to me it, that's something to be deleted yeah, try, why don't we try the welcome to my new webinar post? Okay. Click that. Doesn't seem you to tell us if you've done something wrong because, you know, this, this pretty small print we're seeing. So I would select all of that and replace it with the read more or continue reading or whatever you want for that link. Right, but when I click it, it's not going to that post. Well, right. let's just select the text first. One step okay. at a time. I mean, I don't know what comes next, so let's find out. Or just start typing continue reading and see if it replaces that text. Sure looks like it replaces it. Yeah, it replaces it. All right. Okay. Continue reading. Oh, why don't you do update and see what happens on the... Now, just for the heck of it, try right-clicking the word continue reading that you just did, and let's see if anything... Right-clicking? Yeah. Let's just say, does it does it look like it gives you an opportunity to add a URL to it? That looks like a, um, a browser menu. Yeah. It's come up. Okay, so that's, that's definitely not it then. So what do you think, guys? Just save this and see if it works? Yeah, uh, sure. 
do update so and go up, back update. to the home page. Yeah. And then go back to the go to the tab oh, with the what? page displayed and still seems to you're be on a tab with it, right? Oh. Oops. It's working. Well, let's click and find out. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, so this is what you it want. Was. This is what you intended. Wait a minute. It still says continue reading inside the tech inside the paragraph, though. Yeah, because we haven't taken it out. Or wait mm -hmm. a second. You're saying on this new one that didn't have it before. Yeah, it's, it's got the link at the bottom, but it also has the word continue reading embedded within the text in the paragraph. Uh, I can't see uh, it. Show, can no, someone highlight that? Have a look at the sustainability in the spotlight post. Oh, okay. Wait a second. You're. Yeah, we've only done one, Drew. Oh. You see, uh, it's on the. Uh... But you know what? The boxes have gone too. Oh. All, all of them have changed. Yeah. Everything's Try changed. Try one of the other posts. Now, what exact? What exactly has changed? The outline, the box or tile or whatever it is you call it. Oh, that, yes. That yeah, I pointed that out when it was first displayed. Yeah, it doesn't have its borders. The borders, yeah. Right. But let's solve uh, one problem at a time. I don't think adding the text, continue reading, would have the effect normally of changing the, this, you know, the borders of, of, of this query loop. All the, all the, the sorry. The post or card or tile that we're looking at now is in a sense, in a manner of speaking, a template part, right? So whatever the first card or tile was designed to do or laid out, then that same layout is used in all the rest of the tiles or cards, right? So okay. you change the layout only in one and then replic and that replicates automatically through the rest of them. That's the way the mechanism oh, I see. Okay. Now, in the case we're talking about here, adding the continue text, I wonder if we're violating sort of the basic premise of the way the query loop works. You don't adjust each individual post hand by hand, one by one. Right. You do the template part, and then it right. automatically applies to every post every time it's used. Right. And we're missing that. Now, do we see those words continue reading in the body of the post text the excerpt that's that's displayed yes it's there okay i'm just looking at this that one sustainability one where, yeah where? see it's there okay continue no, no i know but that was there before click on right. the reading but is there any reason why we can't delete that now because it's not a link uh, so it's not dynamic in any way yes and it definitely doesn't belong there um no, so I just click on continue from reading. The post accepts. Sorry, what was somebody saying there? Just click on continue reading. I think it's, a, it's the post accept from the sustainability post. I, I didn't quite understand that. Say that again, please. Into the original post at the back end. So I'm guessing the continue reading is just a part of the post excerpts. So if we go to I'm sorry, but you're breaking up a lot. I'm having trouble understanding column. you. Could you turn your could you turn your video on? That actually may might might make his audio worse if he's got uh yeah, but I just like to issues. try. I just like <laughs> to try. So could we see your video, please? Victor uh, sends in the in the um uh, uh, text uh, messages that I'll be back. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So we are now, what do we just, what are we going to do next? I mean, I think removing the unwanted text is a good step. Um, if the links are working now, and you notice that when you put in continue reading, was that link, that link wasn't filled out, that particular input wasn't filled out in all of the tiles, was it, when we started this little, this Correct. stage? Correct. No. 
So by changing it in one tile, can you have you noticed that it's changed them in all the tiles? Yes. <clears throat> so let's go way. back to the sustainability one. We'll see if deleting the text, the unwanted text there, has the desirable effect of deleting it from all the other ones automatically. Wouldn't that be nice? Hello? So Ron. Yep. So um Okay, that's the wrong page. Hmm? That's not the post we want. That's that's not, that is a post. Right, that yeah. is a post. Okay, so where do we and want Actually, to I would suggest closing that because it's just going to confuse you. Okay. I mean, you'll keep switching to it. No, just close the tab in your browser. I'll close the tab. All right, never mind. Should I start again on the no, tab? No, we'll, I'll just yell at you if you mm -hmm. hit it again. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. We want the we want to edit the page, the blog archive page. Okay. It should be open on a tab right now, somewhere. Okay. And so what we want to do is try from the sustainability post, deleting the unwanted words, continue right. reading, and cross our fingers that it goes, leaves all the posts. Okay. Okay. So I have to go to the... Um, no, you just go down an inch and a half to where it says continue reading in the text of the post, in the excerpt. Move your yeah. move the cursor up one line. Move it up one line. Stop. Do not do that. Go up a line where it says continue reading and delete yeah. that text. Okay. Whoops, what happened there? Well, deleted, I guess I deleted would undo everything. Then. I would hit undo. Okay. Now, uh, I guess a, one question is: Is there any chance that continue reading it happens to be in the body text of all these posts? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's how it was originally. Oh, okay. So, in other words, this is correctly. This excerpt is correct because those words are in the post. Right. Okay, well, you're, you're and hold, on, hold on, hold on, listen to me, please. <laughs> um, so the continue reading, the, okay, that had the link, and then there was no wor more words after that. Just that's what we're seeing right now, right? No, we're seeing uh, right now. We're seeing, you know, sustainability in the spot. We're seeing the um, the further and you know further text i.e. the title being repeated and that shouldn't be there okay so the title is being repeated as well and now you're yeah. saying that this is part of the okay the so text of the, this, wait a sec this is part of the text of this post you're saying yes okay so now that you haven't deleted the tab with the edit post in it now we can make use of it so let's go there and show us the the body text from which the excerpt is 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 taken and we'll confirm that that text no no let's go to the pay the tab you have a tab open that okay. has the edit page for that post in particular for that tab of your browser go to your browser tabs yeah find the tab that's editing that particular post i think uh, i don't think i have it open uh okay well it was open so let's open it again uh Actually, you could just you could display the post from the page that page now just click it and it should okay here we are all right so let's edit. no we don't want to don't want to edit that page no no oh you don't want to edit you want to use the link in the post itself go to the sustainability post sorry let's go back then no, no, that that was it. You just hit it and missed it. I think so. Uh, is this it? No. Wait a mm. second. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. So let's scroll down a bit. And let's look to see. Oh, it went. Um, so you want to we want to actually go to the uh, go back, right? Are, well, if this, we're this editing, is the text. If we're this editing is, the 
Ron. Yeah. We want to edit the sustainability post. Okay. So, so here we are. All right. Do you see the words continue reading and the title repeated in the text of the post? No. Okay. So the process of creating the blog archive page somehow was introduced to dynamic elements into the query loop. Mm -hmm. And so what we could try is what I suggested which I have been suggesting, which is to delete the, que the text in question as an experiment to see whether that results in the text being removed from all the other tiles as well. On the theory that the post, that first post in the query loop is in a sense, the template for all the other cards. And so if you amend one, you amend, revise them all. That's what we did when we changed the continue reading text by making it a link. Right. It changed it one place and it now appears on all of the tiles. Correct? Could, uh, could uh, there be another um, excerpt being put in here uh, by Yoast? A possibility? Yep. Yeah. Uh, if you, I see okay, you, do you want to try that before just just deleting scroll, the text? Yeah, before we do that, just scroll down a bit and have a look and see what Yoast is up to. Um, SEO analysis. Yeah, um, just wanted, uh, it's, a bit. I just wanted to see if they if they put in a. Yeah, um, Ron, what Drew is looking for is to see if some plugin has had the job of inserting those two dynamic elements into the card. Yeah. And therefore, if we turn it off, it may remove it. That's well, let's not to turn off. Let's just scroll up a little bit. But well, we have to find it first before we yeah. consider turning it off. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I got cut off. Hi. Hmm. Okay, well, I don't see anything here that uh, is uh, um, putting in an excerpt. Uh, I've noticed also that when we look at the full um, article uh, on sustainability, the text actually does appear to be somewhat different from what appears um, in the box on the home page. Well, it is drawing the text. It is identical text, but it's putting it, I guess, in a different format. Yeah, okay. So I'm trying to figure out how far we get down before it turns into... Well, it was uh, 20 so, words. Yeah. All right. Environment and social. And then, okay. So it's environment and social and then dot, 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 and then continue reading. So if I look at this... Uh, Okay, all right. So when I look at the full article, that sentence continues on, but um, so it's your it's your first paragraph in the article that's being sort of split up here. Hmm. So something else is inserting that continue reading. It doesn't actually appear in the text, right? Right. So it may be that the people who had helped him before have introduced these two dynamic elements in a way which made them into just plain text when they're displayed, but they came, they come in as dynamic elements that are failing. In other words, um, if the if the excerpt text now includes the post title in the body of the excerpt, then that's a dynamic element sort of gone awry. And so it is a question of deleting it. Now, as I've said, when you revise the layout of a tile in a query loop, it is supposed to and has, a, has, an, has tonight 
made the same change in all the other tiles auto magically. That is why I keep going back to why not delete the miscreant text in question on the off chance that, uh, that that'll produce a desirable result. Uh, Mike wanted to make a comment or something. Yeah, just, just a quick comment. Right. Could right. we? Can we see the HTML version of this post? Because I wonder if somebody's directly entered some HTML. That's an excellent suggestion. And to do that, uh, we want to look at the HTML of the post, right? So go right, to Mike. Hang on, hang on. Right, uh, Mike. Mike. Okay, so well, I you guess can do it from your side, want. right? Now, are we in the block editor? Yes, we are. So we want to change the view to. Um, you know, view, view source, view code. What is it called these days, guys? Um, <laughs> it's called, I used a different editor. Um, hit the three dots and let's see if we can do it there. Yeah. We want to go from this view to a different view. Code uh, editor. There it is, code editor. Right, code editor. Right, click on that. And uh, now uh, let that menu close. And now let's look where it says, what we're looking for is Continue. to see if the text in question is an HTML is an HTML element that's dynamic or, or is a URL or whatever. Now, if you can just, can you scroll? I guess there's no scrolling. Well, that's, but that's it. Okay, there's the title. Um, and now we go whether or not blah, 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 emphasis. Uh, let me just enlarge this <laughs> on my large display. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not seeing it here in the code either. Uh, the sentence is complete with no... Uh, okay, uh, so this is the this is the post's code. So we want to now look at the blog archive pages code as well for exactly the same thing, because this is what should be appearing. What we're seeing here is what should appear in the um, the blog archive page view code view, okay. Right? And so we're just going to compare them. So leave this as a tie uh, as a as a tab, and now switch over to the blog archive page. Yes. Yeah. We're, next one. Ed, edit home page. Edit home page. Right. Uh, now uh, we want to go to the code view. All right and uh, go to the first post or just search for the word sustainability. I saw the word excerpt in there. Pardon? Uh, There's a lot of query. <laughs> Actually, you know what, what, guys? I don't know whether we should be looking at the code view here or the code of the displayed page. Okay, so this is the query code itself. And um, I can't say that I'm really that knowledgeable about the actual code. But let's look for post title. Um, uh, da, da, da. Post title there. Okay, and then we have post date. That's where it belongs. And we have post excerpt, right? Oh, wait a sec, there it is. Um, where it says post excerpt, WP colon, and it says more text, continue reading and so on. I think, no, that's not duplicated. Um, all right. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's the continue reading. Right. I mean, I think this, um, I mean, this looks right to me to the extent I that I can tell. Right. Um, can we scroll up a bit and see what's before that? Sorry, what was that? I'm wondering what's above. I think that um, continue reading is correct. I'm just, yeah, I'm just looking at what's before it at the top. Keep scrolling. Yeah, go, scroll to the top and let's just see. Okay, so we're at the very top. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we, you know the first part, the heading, that seems straightforward, no problem. Okay. Now we go to the query block. So scroll down so the WP query is the first query. line displayed. Okay. And uh, all right. Default. So there are all the variables yeah. per page, pages post offset, date. post type. Yeah. Post title, post dates. Okay, w class query. Okay, does it look the WP query up to at least where it says post date looks looks like it 
doesn't look like anything's wrong with it. Let's put it that way. But um, so then we have the post date following the title. And I wonder, uh, guys, whether the the first part where it's the WP query um, wouldn't it make more sense for that to follow the post title and no, I guess not. I was thinking maybe if it followed the post title and post date, um, that might work. But the point here is that the query has to sort of first build all the individual posts. Um, now, do we have a second query down here? Can you scroll down to where it says query and then uh, ID is 11. Now, do we have an endless number of these query I, you know, query items, query, how many are there? Okay, now this pagination stuff is for the end of the page and not part of the individual posts. So we have the post template, post excerpt. So where your cursor is now, Ron, yep. what we wanna do is count how many, um, repeats there are of that query block of, of code. Because what's below your cursor right now is the stuff that ends the page as a whole, nothing to do with the individual posts. Okay. And the post template where it says post template, that's the end of the template for the individual posts. And then post excerpt and post date, blah, 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 right? So that's where we expect it. And so we have, this is the first query, or rather the W colon query, query ID 11. Now, I think we have two queries. Do you see that, Ron? Yes, yes, we have two. Now, um, one, is there a reason for having two? I, I personally, I mean, you can have two if you want to display. Two so where were the two queries? That so you, if well, you I'm the, saying, does anybody else think that, see what I'm seeing, which is that it looks like there's two Queries, the queries, which means the three components of the query, the query itself, the post date, the post excerpt, right? Um, so that's one of them, the one we're looking at right now. If you scroll up, I think we see the same thing duplicated, but with a different query ID. Yes. We have WP query, right? And a type. Now, wait a second, though. Scroll back to where we just were. Is there a close query colon? No. Now, after post template or just before post template, right? It seems to me what there should be is the following code. So now scroll up to where you just were a minute ago. And it says, okay, right where it says, you know, it says post excerpt, post template, and then it's this is close post query, close WP query, right? That's what I take, I read that as in effect. Right, ending the section of the query. Aha. Now, if that's what it means, because I think it does, then this second query is deficient in that it doesn't seem to have a closing element um, in the same way that the first one does. So that's an anomaly, I think. Um, however, if we just have query. Query ID equals, now, let me think now. I guess if we, I'm not sure, I don't know enough about query loops to really understand that. Um, there is a fellow uh, who's one of the WP core developers. And one of his areas that he's worked on and spoken of at WordCamps and at his own WP meetup is a guy named um, Micah Wood, M I C. A H Wood, W O O D. And the meetup group is called Gwinnett, G W I double N Gwinnett, E T, I guess it is. Anyway, which I think it's a suburb of Atlanta. Um, if anybody has a problem finding that and wants to find it, uh, I'll see if I can post, I uh, put into the comments um, the link for that. Um, the reason I mention that is that if if I wanted an expert in query loops, 
uh, he's the first guy that I would think of. And uh, he happens to be, happens to have two characteristics which are highly desirable. First of all, he's pretty well spoken so he can explain things and they make sense. And number two, he's running the equivalent of this meetup, but in Gwinnett or you know Atlanta or wherever the fuck that is. Uh, I'm not sure where exactly <laughs> it is, but it's definitely a meetup group. I get their announcements. They've got another one coming up in a week or two. Hmm. Um, knowing what we've just gone through now, Ron, the key point here is to simply say, I, I'm not, you know, you're saying to him, I'm not that familiar with how these things work, the blog archive page and so on. But I, when I went to the Toronto site clinic group, we got as far as seeing that there looked like two queries two query loops and then this somehow this this continue reading and page title got into the excerpt component of the of the tiler card that, if we if we were to look at the page hierarchy um of the um uh so. posts page uh would both uh, maybe uh, both uh, queries would show up there so we can find out where they came from Oh, can I say something? Just a second, just a second. Could you just uh, explain a little better, Drew, what you're asking for? I'm not sure what it is. Well, you know the hierarchy tree that shows you the... The uh, template hierarchy. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, do you want to look at that? Well, or, first of all... Uh, I, I don't I know how to get that to show on a, an individual site. Yeah, you have to help me with, with, with your name. It's uh, Olua Sagun. Uh, and if you could unmute yourself, you're on mute. Yeah, yeah, you can say Victor. Victor, oh, sure. okay, Victor, okay. Uh, Victor, okay. you wanted to say something. Yeah, so two things. I was wondering if I could get the whole code in one bit because I was trying to study it. And secondly, I did notice on the homepage, I noticed the pattern in that, yes, um, Robin, I think you're right. Um, there are two queries on that page. The first query is a one column um display wow the oh right one right you mean, in the, two you mean the, the, right the top post yes the post that goes from side to side must be a different yes. query is a, a different query after. than right. the ones in two columns and i can okay. see that from the the code here there's a place that says um greed and columns too that's that's why there are two queries there i also noticed the pattern um in both queries you have the title you have the date, you have some excerpts. At that point where you now have continue reading, after the continue reading, what you have before the next continue reading is usually the title. So between two continue reading texts, you have the title again being repeated in every post right. you are looking and at. And it never used to be that way. <laughs> yes. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know um, if I could get a copy of this whole um, query. Yeah, um, uh, easy, it's e easy enough done, Ron, for you to simply select all of this. Yes, I, I, I'll take a look in a few and minutes. Then and then drop it into just with something. Uh, paste it into the chat window and see if it works. It's great to be here, by the way. But that's an excellent point, though, that the, there are two query loops because that first post is laid out in a completely different way than the other posts. And that means it has to be a different template, which means a different query loop. And it looks okay. like the second query uh, is being closed when I look at the very bottom. So it's in the chat for everybody. Right, thank you. I'll check it. Thank you. I should have a solution hopefully soon. Okay, do you want to look at that for a few minutes, Victor, and we'll come back to you? All right, all right. Because my suggestion is to delete the the um, continue reading text, and but nobody else seems to think that's a good idea, so I give up. Uh, <laughs> uh, and um, maybe Victor will come back to it, maybe he won't, but I'm done with that particular suggestion. And um, so depending on, if Victor can't solve the problem, then my recommendation is to go to Micah, um, in a yeah, week or Michael ten days Wood, time. Gwinnett. Gwinnett. Uh, he, he, so Gwinnett is a... Um, it's the same thing as we're doing here, yeah. except that it's a different place and a different time and everything else. And uh, 
if you give me a half a second here, it's easy enough for me to find it in my email because the announcement was recently out. So let's see what social has to say. Uh, there it is. Okay, so give me one second and I'll dial it up. RSVP now. Okay. So this is the upcoming one. And uh, they call theirs help desk. And so this one is for Monday the 28th. And um, <laughs> you can say that you, know, we, you stumped the guys at the Toronto um, equivalent <laughs> of your help desk, Micah. And so Robin, the host there said, uh, go and talk to Micah because he's the query loop guy uh, <laughs> in Robin's view. Um, plus, I think you'll just find him a congenial, you know, helpful guy. Um, his most recent uh, uh, WordPress learning thing was on uh, managing your database. Um, and that was last week. And it was superb. And so if you were ever curious about what goes on in the WordPress database, then go to the WordPress learning or uh, sorry, WordPress TV and search for Micah. And it should be the first item in his list of, you know, recent videos. Mm. Okay, so let's leave Victor to that. And Ron, we're going to shunt you aside and yeah, uh, okay. come back to you with Victor or um, send you off to Micah. Okay. All <laughs> right. right. Yep. Yep. All right. Although so, I would like to return the page sort of as it was with the borders and that. Uh, so how do you return it to that? Well, you, I guess you have to either undo what you did or, um, I don't know, the backup. I mean, you you mm. made the change without yeah, back I, I got a backup, or, yeah. Or copying the page or whatever. Um, okay. All right. I will do, 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 do. What, what you, you may be able to do is simply find in the database the one post in particular that you want to replace or recover and just ex import export that and then import that into the new site in, uh, sorry um get that out of your export and import it into your new to the current site just that one post mm -hmm. now um I don't know why the borders would disappear when we're doing something completely unrelated. Mm -hmm. um, but that's either comes back with Victor's solution or with Micah's solution. But um, our problem is that we're, we're not getting the layout of the Carter tile to display so that we can look at it and say, oh, well, there's where the border goes. Let's check the border setting. Let's check the title setting. Let's look at the font. Right, the right, We're not right. getting any of that yeah. to work with in the block editor, which is means that something's really screwed up. That it well, could it be it. in the uh, CSS of, um, thing? No. Um, okay. Um, well, I mean, there, there will, this is a classic theme, I take it. So there will be a style sheet somewhere. And... Um, um, but that, and that might give you the settings, but not how they're implemented or why they've changed. Um, mm. Let's go back to um, the non, the, you know, the visual view of the edit page rather than the code editor, or or maybe leave it there for Victor or what? Um, I don't know. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Okay, um, if it turns out that deleting that read, continue reading and the post, the words of the post title, if that turns out to be the solution to this problem, <laughs> I'm going to be really ticked off. <laughs> okay, so. All right, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've taken up a lot of your time and yeah. I appreciate And besides, it. we're letting yeah. Victor have time to work, to work yeah. away, see yeah. what he can do. And let's there are, see I'm sure are other people that uh, want to let's see is bill uh around 
are with us. Bill, are you there? Bill Hertha? Yep, I'm here. Thanks. Okay, is it your comment in the um, on the meetup page? Yeah, yeah, re related to search. Right. So let's. Um, before we just before we move on to Bill, can I ask uh, Ron if you'd stop sharing your screen? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's look at. Well, I can give you a brief summary if you like, or I sure, can... sure, go ahead. Well, I um, I installed a, a search engine. Um, just a moment. Let me see what the name of it is. Um, Anyways, um, so basically what happens is I've created a search page and it, um, it works uh, if I'm trying to search for text. And uh, if I enter in category names or tags, uh, it, it finds the posts uh, or pages related, uh, associated with those. But when I have a post, I include in the post, the category and the tags that are associated with it. And when I click on one of those, it doesn't bring up the, uh, the uh, posts that are in that category. In other words, that category or tag search from that link doesn't work. So I spoke to the uh, people who made the search engine and they said, well, it's a problem with the, um, with the template that I'm using. And so now I'm sort of stuck. I don't know what to do with that. Like I don't, I, I created the template myself. I used one of these template generators and it just, uh, so I, I don't really know where to go and where to. So uh, you, uh, do you have a classic theme or a block theme? It's block. It's a block theme. It's a block theme, everything. Uh, the search uh, product is called Ivory Search, by the way. Right. But I, uh, I suspect it's a common problem. So now, when you said you you so you created your own template? Yeah, using some sort of it's a there's a tool that uh, allows you to generate a pretty vanilla template. Yeah, but it, was that a custom post type you were creating? Um, well, I don't know what you mean by. Well, you type. can't just. I mean, some themes may permit you to create a template. Is that is that how you went? Like you said, okay, I need a template. Go and create a template, and then that was all there was to it. Um, okay, well, no, I used the templates that came with the theme. I've made some modifications to them. So you picked a you picked one of the themes templates. Yeah, and then devoted that or dedicated that to the search to your oh. search page, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay, and when you started to work on it, it was empty other than the fact that when it displayed, it would have a header and footer? Uh, yeah, it was pretty well empty, yeah. Well, when you say pretty well, I mean, we're trying to debug something, so pretty well doesn't really cut it, right? Sure. Was there anything on the page or not? No. Okay. So in other words, whatever's on the page, you've added? Yes. Good, good, okay. So um, the, what were the instructions on the plugin? What did, what did, they, what did they tell you? Well, there's, uh, let me just look. I think there's basically just uh, short codes that you put in. Can you display whatever the plugin instructions or settings are? Yeah. So we can see. Okay, let me just uh, get to that thing. Because it doesn't sound like it's a search function that's failing, but just simply um, yeah. getting the right uh, dynamic, right, get the right value for that, that dynamic element category or tag. Yeah. I, I, I can. Um, so when you click a category, what does it actually display then? So it displays a URL, and the URL that's uh, um, is different. It's it's a hierarchical URL. It goes uh, category uh, slash category slash whatever the category name is, uh, and it's. But, is it, but isn't, isn't that what a category? If you want to display. The items in a category isn't that what you do or work with? Yeah, but well, it, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't seem to uh, do it. That's the problem. Yeah, I'm looking at this, and uh, I picked a particular category, um, and uh, it basically just displays all the posts regardless right. of category. Right. So it, it doesn't. It doesn't honor the category filter. Right. Okay. Wait a second, Drew. Just 
So you're saying that it displays all the posts in the category. No, it displays all posts, period. Oh, all posts. Uh, okay, so it's it's going and searching, but the, the filter is not working. It's not filtering anything. It's not filtering anything. Now, right. just, to, just to be clear, if you do enter a category name in a search field on the search page, then it works. Do you want okay. me to? I mean, I'm just looking where where is the search page or function? I've got the hamburger menu displayed. Yeah. Um, uh, I I don't know how to uh, set up a, a a share screen. Oh, here here share screen. Just a moment, Drew. Wh where did you get where did you get to the search function or page? No, I didn't use the search function. What I did was I opened uh, a random post um, and just picked a category. So <laughs> if you uh, click on those little three lines, then you'll see all the op menu options. And down here at the bottom, where the spotlight is, that's the, that'll take you to the search function. So this is my search page. Okay, and sorry. Where, where, and where? How do I get to that? The uh, URL is uh, up here, hertha.ca. Okay, put that in chat, please, so that yeah. I can just click it. Click it. Okay. Is there a URL somewhere that I'm missing? That yeah, it was on the uh, in the comment in the um, uh, a meetup page. <laughs> yeah, but on the site, I mean. Oh yeah, just open any blog post and uh, I'm looking at one. I was just looking at one right now. And okay, I didn't pick, see pick a category and click the category title. So in other words, you can't search directly. You have to go to a category page and search from that page. Yeah, if basically. you want to see the problem in action, yeah. Huh. Well, that can't be true because it's anything displayed by the search in the search engine report will have a category link in any posts provided, so, right? Yeah. So, so uh, if you see this here, I'm, I'm hovering over the uh, category photography and you'll see in the bottom left corner, you'll see it's blog category photography dash two. Right. But if I click on that, that's, that's going to bring up all the posts. Right. Uh, um, so while, while this arose or comes up, comes about, because, you know, in relation to search, yeah. Why do you think this is a search issue or a search plugin issue rather than something's not working with how categories are are functioning within your site? No, I think uh, based on the feedback I got from the search engine provider, they said it's not a search engine problem. It's something, well, they said in the template, but, you know, I frankly don't really know. So um, if I type in... If I type in a category here, like say photography, then you'll but see. Wait, wait a second. Wait, why? Why are you relating this to search? Why? Why? What relationship is there between the search function and the way categories work? Because I'm trying to search on categories. Right, but the problem is the category is not the search. If when you display a single post, the category URL fails in the same way that the search report fails that suggests to me that it's not search it's the category scheme okay i i don't and know so therefore it's got nothing to do with search anything that used the category function a single post i don't know um what else uh an about page or something um sure. they, they will all consistently fail for the same reason something's broken in the category scheme um okay. Now, the question is, what in your template did you do that would affect how um, categories work? Just by the by, what about tags? Does the same problem exist with tags? Yeah, same problem with tags. Okay. And before you implemented the search, everything worked properly? Um, no, it, I don't think it ever worked properly. Right. So why do you bring up search? I mean, it seems completely disconnected. Well... Okay, it, it may be completely disconnected. No, but I mean, it, it. the problem existed before search. The problem that in search is exactly the same problem on pages without search or not produced through a search function. So maybe uh, maybe my question should be, uh, what what is it that I need to do to make this? Uh, to debug the, the tags and categories function, which is to yeah. say, 
the taxonomies. Um, sure. That is a good question. Let me just let's ask Mr. Google. Yeah. Um, I would actually want, want to go and have a look at this uh, template generator um, and uh, look at the uh, template that you actually generated. Yeah, I, that's certainly one line. I, I, it's pretty vanilla, but of course you could be, uh, there could be something there too. I, I, I actually am just, um, I don't know where to look. And so any suggestions in terms of where to look uh, would be. Would well, be uh, let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the, uh, where you actually generated this template. Oh uh, yeah. Um, can I just interrupt Bill okay. to ask a, a quick question and then go right back to what Drew's saying, just like a yes or no answer. Yeah. Are you, is it possible that you created a custom taxonomy? Uh, I did create a taxonomy, yes. Of, of categories and tags, yes. Right. And um, I, I, as far as I understand, uh, if you want to have a taxonomy and a template, then you have to have a custom post type. I see. I mean, that's my understanding. If I wanted either of those two things, yeah. If I want, sorry, if I wanted both of those things, in other words, a taxonomy that's specific to pages that use the custom post type, right? But I don't here, think here our pages are, we're talking about post posts, right? So there is a post template. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Where so would the custom is, taxonomy go? Yeah, this is my taxonomy. Right. Okay. And there is and a there are there's a couple levels. But where's the where's the template that you created? Right. So let's go back to Drew now. And okay. Could you leave this tab up to come back to late in a few minutes? So just sure. do go and find the, on a new tab. Yeah. How you doing there, Victor? You making any progress? So this is um, the, the theme. I okay. don't is right, it like me to no, no, go ahead, go ahead. What would you like me to do? Here? Well, I'd like to see where you actually modified the template. So I want to look at the... Uh... Is, is there a, where's the theme that the child relates to? Well, this is the child. The, the, uh, the parent is uh, basically empty. I just created a child template for all the modifications. So let me just uh, go back. You want to uh, do this. But I, I don't see an underlying theme for the child to, to be the parent of the child. Well, there's a, there is a parent and a child joined at just one. Sorry, the, the, no, the parent doesn't exist in the child. There would be normally Here's in the a themes panel Okay, it says theme details, but I, like I don't see a theme there. So let's click theme details and just see what it says. I mean, maybe it's just missing the image that. Yeah, I didn't put the there. image in. Click, let's click theme details and see. Well, it's. Okay, so. So where did this theme come from? It's uh, generated. I oh, okay. use this tool to generate. I, f I forget the name of it. It was on uh, the uh, WordPress site. There's. Oh. Uh, in the section that they talk about building your own theme, there's a, there's a web-based tool to generate a theme. You're not talking about that create block theme plugin, are you? Something like that. Well, Is that it's not it? a plugin. It's not a plugin. It mm -hmm. generates an actual the actual. So it's a service you go to some website for. Yeah. Can you give what? us the link to the website? Well, I'd have to look it up. I'm sorry, I, I don't have. Um. The well, it's just that, you know, you're, if you created your own theme and you are a novice yeah. and then you created a child theme from your own theme, it just sounds like a huge dog's breakfast of a mess. I mean, how would you know what a theme was supposed to have in it and how it was supposed to work? I mean, that, I, I wouldn't dream of creating a theme from scratch or using a service because of the complexity of just one thing like, you know. What I'm uh, thinking possibly is that this theme 
has omitted the default taxonomies. Um, oh. So <laughs> why don't, okay, so that, that's a point. Wait a second, wait a second. I'm not sure that the team theme as such has anything to do with the taxonomies that come out of the box with WordPress, but maybe. Uh, yeah, you don't. You, you I don't. We gotta recall in the dozen or so sessions I've had on, on the mm -hmm. um, theme.json file, which is the core of the whole theme process. I've never seen anything come up about taxonomies and tags. Uh, yeah, categories and tags. Anyway, um, I must say you you know you're incredibly adventurous. Um, we could, we could try test, this on, test but I think that the outcome of it is, is that you're in a place that you have no idea how to go from there to somewhere else. Yeah. And It'd actually, to my really way of thinking easy. from, a, if you, if you can show us where the theme came from or the generator, then we can maybe yeah. noodle our way through it, but not knowing how this thing was generated or what inputs there were is yeah. just a complete sort of guessing game then. One way to I mean, we could we could go and look at the theme.json file. We could look at the list of files for the block theme and see if they're all the right components there. Sure. But that's a tedious exercise and um, uh, not one we would have time for here. Great. Um, okay, that's fine. One thing we can do quickly is try one of the WordPress default themes. Exactly. Huh. Yeah, go to 2023 or something. Yeah, any WordPress yeah. default theme. Bill, do you have a current backup for the site? Um, yeah, so why don't I do that separately? Because uh, I I, uh, I have a backup, but it's a few days old. And sure. I don't want to mess, uh, mess this. What, what host are you with? I'm with a company called DreamHost. Right. Okay, so yeah, I would just make sure that you have an up-to-date backup and that you're comfortable recovering the site from it. Right. Uh, um, Replace the theme or try another theme to see what effect that has, if any. But Drew, that will knock out his template, right? Yeah, of course. Um, uh, no, it won't. You can just switch. You can always switch back. You can switch back from one theme to another. In fact, no, no, no. But I mean, a new theme will not recognize the, the, the template he created, will it? It won't no, recognize sure. the created I can, template. I can back it up. So. But it, it's, it's, a, it's only used as a way of testing um whether the um whether uh, taxonomies are working yeah right okay so um bill limit yourself in trying 2023 just to that one question and if the taxonomy if the cut of the categories and tags are working um you know that'll tell you something now drew you wanted to see the template yeah do this template, the template yeah. in the editor why don't we just well, do that? no no i didn't want to see the template i wanted to see the template generator Oh, yeah, right, that's, right. A, that's outside of WordPress. So, yeah. so Bill, could huh. you spend a minute or two and see if you can find the link to the service and then just put it in chat? Yeah, okay. Yeah. That would be helpful. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's fine. I'll, I'll look for that and uh, I'll let you go on then to uh, other things. Okay. Sorry, we, I mean, we're like zero for two tonight. And yeah. um, <laughs> well, now there, there was one more thought I did notice. This is a bit of a long shot that you are using a um, performance optimization plugin that is um, minifying your CSS and, and your JavaScript. Right. Um, like I said, it's a long shot, but if we were to turn off that optimizer plugin, I'd like to see if this problem goes away. Uh, you know, I just I just installed that plugin just uh, a, a few days ago, a week ago. Okay. Um, Has the problem been going on b before that? Yeah, it had been. Okay. All right, so that's not it then. Yeah. yeah. But thanks. Well, one, one another possibility is just to simply turn off all the plugins and uh, sort of run the site vanilla uh, just to see if a plugin could be the cause. And then if that works, like if the categories and tags work, uh, then do that binary search thing uh, where you turn on half of the plugins uh, at a time and see if the problem persists. And then eventually you sort of, by taking halves at a time, you know, if the halves are A and B. 
So you first turn off A and see what the plugins in B, if they do the job. And if everything works fine, fine. Now you just go back to A, split it in half and do the AB again. Sure. Are the you know categories and tags working, yes or no? And then you could in that way end up with one plugin that is actually causing the problem. So that's that's the way you would test for a plugin conflict or a plugin doing something that blocks categories and tags from working. There's also a way of uh, doing something similar for theme testing. There's a theme tester plugin that uh, shows a, a different theme just to the administrative user and shows every, uh, whatever theme you're, you've set to the general public. So the, if you're testing out different themes, um, you can try different themes and the general public just keeps seeing your site as it is without it changing on them constantly. Sorry, how does that work? How do you do that? Uh, well, there's a, um, a, a um, plugin called Theme Tester. And I think the um uh i think that the uh um plugin version of the of health check might also have this feature in it but i'm not 100 percent sure okay i can look Wait, i just thought of something too when you were saying that um uh is ron still around yep um, make a note of something called Query Monitor or the plugin Query Monitor um, because it may be able to um, assist you to diagnose the problem hmm. of what of what the query process is doing. A query Monitor is supposed to be able to sort of diagnose query related issues. Huh. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. That's what that tool is for. I myself haven't made any significant use of it, but I got it on my list as a go-to tool for this type of a problem. Okay, thank you. I'm just sort of dying, Drew, to see the template. <laughs> that yeah, I'm, asked, I'm but, looking for it. And, but uh, not to worry if, uh, and uh, then Mike, you raised your hand again. Gee, you're such a polite guy. Just, uh, <laughs> you may, um, you may turn, unmute yourself and speak up. Okay. I just thought of an old stupid thing I've done in SQL a few times um that's really blown up searches which is if you manage to put in a data item with a, a null or a blank in it and you do a search it just might happen to match all records and then if you're doing indirect referencing you say if it matches my blank show it to me whereupon it shows you everything and you go crazy looking at your code and then about a week later you look at your data and you see you've got a blank item in your in your data set and you're basically using it, using that as a default to do your search. So I, I just thought maybe if this is something new, you might want to take a look and see if you possibly added a blank line somewhere and it's coming back and biting you. Yeah. I Personally, I think as well that it, to me, it doesn't look like the second query loop or the one of the two query loops doesn't look like it was properly closed, which is to say an exactly. opening and a closing tag. Um, one query loop has an open and close tag. The other one has the open but no close. And it seems so to me that that can affect the way those work. Um, Victor, how are you doing? Yeah, fine. Two things that came to my mind. Um, either that the query is not well structured or formatted, or what if we go to a blank page and try to um, build the blocks again and see what comes up if we have the continuum reading still showing up? That's, that's what we started off doing, and the group didn't like that approach, and so we went off in another direction. But I, okay, I think my I'm thought was let's build a new blog archive homepage uh, with our own query block, configure it, and then let it rip. Because I, I on my own website right now, I just played around with the query um, loop thing, and it worked fine. There's no problem. So if he does that, he might get the solution to that, or except if he's tampered with the functions.php or has a conflicting um, plugin that is not well written, that is making, adding those additional text or making it not formatted, either, either of the two um, solutions should help, help us resolve what the problem is. Yeah, and the second thing is what I was referring to 
uh, I think in Bill's case, where you turn off half of your plugins, yeah, trying to identify some plugin that's causing the problem, and each time that you know turning off half does not change the or fix the problem, then you continue moving through the next half. And, and in halves, in effect, work your way down to one plug-in. Um, and that's, that's where the problem is, which means then that you either replace the plug-in with something comparable, but from a different developer, or you perform the function in some other way, or you just give it up because yeah. the feature that you want, that it's blocking, is valuable enough to, you know, to be worth more than whatever the plug-in was doing. And because I'm assuming as well, in Bill's case, that he's up to date uh, as far as WordPress core and his plugins and all the rest of it, because that can be a problem when you have lots of plugins. If they're not all up to date, then um, they could, there could be problems as a result. Yeah, they're all up to date. Good, good, excellent. Okay. Um, uh, Rob, <laughs> just okay. That's okay. Continue. <laughs> no, go ahead, Ron. Um. I've lost a train of thought. <laughs> when it comes back to you. Okay. Um, all right. Who would like to be next? Since we're not having a great evening from the point of view of solving problems, uh, not from a lack yeah. of trying, but um, who would like to be our next? Uh, Dan is trying to say something. Dan? Yep. Victor. Done. Done? Okay. Uh, clearly, I'm out of my depth in this group. Okay. Uh, just so you know, I'm on the board of directors of um, a not-for-profit group in Halton Hills called Trees for Halton Hills. Our, our goal is to plant 65,000 trees in the next five years, one for every resident. So about a month ago, I got handed the responsibility for the website and WordPress, and I've never used it before. So, like I say, I think I'm out of my depth in this group just from the conversation. But maybe you can answer two or three quick questions for me, and that might help. Fire away. All right. So, just to give you an idea, um, today I went in, and all of a sudden I had a page where the content of another page is appearing on this page. So, the title stayed the same. But instead of a description about, uh, what was it, about our, our projects, I had a, the content from a completely different page was now on this page. And one of, one of the things I'm finding with WordPress, uh, Press, it, it's doing things kind of randomly, which is driving me nuts. But uh, I'm wondering if you can give me an idea what would cause something like that to happen? So when you are attempting to open a post, the post that comes up contains content from another post. Yeah. So would it so help? Us, like, yeah. One or, two, my... one or two. Share your screen and just show us. All right. Screen. So let me go into here and all right. Then. Oh. And, and just for the group while you're doing that, um, this does seem similar somewhat uh, in that um, the process which generates the post um, is adding something to that process, which is unwanted and abnormal, which is to say content from another post. And that means in database terms that you're sort of drawing the content from, um, from one row or you know, one record and combining it with a con content part of another row or record. And that there's no, there's no way in which that works or makes sense. That's that's just uh, something important broken. So, uh, for example, I, I, I've started to try to fix it. Well, let's I, just go yes, open up a, open up something and then just show us. Okay. Exactly. So now, keep in mind this is pretty amateurish. I, I should explain that as of a month ago, there was a company doing this. And then they left and I was asked to take it over because to be honest, I was the one least intimidated by it. I, apparently I was wrong. Um, so can I go into edit? 
Can I go into edit with Elementor? No, actually, we wanted you to display a post and then just point out first. I mean, leave this up, but but first the point is, is it just display a post that could demonstrate the problem? And then- Well, it was on this page. So only on this page? It was on this page and it, it the page is obviously called annual reports. And it was um, because we we receive money from the government. We have to we have two annual reports that describes what we did in the years. And as of yesterday, there was the 2021 report and the 2020 report. And as of this morning, it was the content was a list of all the projects we've had, which is a completely different page. But you said before about that was mixing the content. The one post we displayed, and it you're was confusing me by some the, con some content from another post. You see, you're confusing me with the word post versus page. Okay, uh, and we're talking pages then. I'm talking about pages. Right. Okay. I'm not. I'm not even issue worried about posts at this okay. point. Okay. Okay. So, so on, so, on the so what you're saying though, the, 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 the issue is the same though that somehow in the display of the content of a of all pages or just this one page? Just this one page today. So the, this but have one you checked page- any other pages to see whether or not they're having the same problem? I have, and I haven't seen the problem. I've seen other things weird that have happened, but uh, so on this page yesterday, it had um, basically, I'm gonna say eight or nine images. And each image was basically a snapshot of a page of our report. And so we had a 2021 report and a 2020 report. And there were five or six pages, we'll say, on each one. And it was just basically images scrolling by. And so anybody going on could read the reports. Then when I went in this morning to look at it, all of a sudden, annual reports was a list of all the projects we've done and all those images were gone. Is it possible okay. that someone Hi, Dan. in? I think I have a solution to that. You do? Yes. Um, while the annual report page is broken, the one that shows the images, I'll post the links shortly. Um, the one, you are looking at two different pages, actually. This is one, and this is the other one. You want to share your screen there? Um, OK, so let me see I can. Sorry, one second. Let me see if I can do that. Oh, I can't because someone else is sharing. I know. Um, oh, let me turn it yeah, off. Dan needs to turn his off just to enable Victor to show. Okay, stop share. So, sorry, I took a peek at um, your page. Yeah. While so, you were... so, yeah, why don't you display the page? So, okay, here we go. Pick up this page. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yep. So, so that's the me starting to remake the page today okay so then we also have this page can you see this page uh, yep we can see that's, it. that's our projects page okay these are two different pages that's right okay but at one point today all this all the text you see on this in, on the screen in front of you appeared okay. on the annual reports page and all okay. those images of reports were gone Whoa. Okay, just, okay. just uh, Victor, let me jump in here for a second. Yeah. Um, sort of the obvious question to ask is, did someone do this? I'm the only one who has access. Are you sure? I mean, really, how, how much trust can you put in that site for thing anything that you haven't yourself verified? And then you're depending on someone that was fired. Well, she wasn't fired. It's just, uh, to be honest, we're a not-for-profit. We couldn't afford to continue paying her. Okay. So then it became, think, okay, think, in other words, in other which words, one of the eight people is least frightened by technology? And it turned right. out but, but I guess what I'm saying is that it, I'm not sure if I would think the answer to the question, could this be the problem, is it answered by I'm the only one that has access. You just haven't got enough experience with the site to be able to say that with confidence. So I, I wouldn't rely on that. I would okay. consider that as one possible issue and therefore um, hunt around on the off chance that your content has just been relabeled or the page name is or something has changed 
and that it's actually there, but it isn't under a label you recognize. Yeah. I mean, that could be well, the I've, case. I've seen that before. Um, right. But but for a, an individual page to suffer the problem that you have described, um, foreign content being injected into it within the site, but only on one page, that sounds like a page, sounds like a, a problem or error that's specific to the page that rebuilding the page will say, oh, it's a real pain in the neck to have to do that. But if you have to do that, then once it's done, it's over and yeah. everything motors onwards. Yeah. Um, in other words, there's not a code solution for it if it is just a human error problem yeah. or a question of, we don't know what happened, but it only happened to the one page and we replaced the page. Well, you lead to my second comment, which is I, I put a plug in in because I'm a certain, I have a certain sense of paranoia. It's called Updraft Plus. Yep. And I've started doing daily backups. Yep. Again, my paranoia coming through. When I go to, re I said, okay, fine. I, I made backups yesterday. Great. No problem. The page is weird. Instead of spending the time recreating it, I'll just go and restore. Right. So I put it on Google Drive. I went to Google Drive, saw zip files there. But I don't actually see a zip file that contains HTML files. But that's not what they contain. I mean, they do contain HTML files, but... There's a split between the database component of a backup yeah. and then the WordPress files, which have nothing to do with content and your site in the, in the main, uh, as a rule. Uh, they're, they're just a standard set of files. Okay. Um, so how, what, you, how, what you want to do is you just want to restore one particular page. I do. The entire site. How, how do I do that? I, I kind of would lean towards... Um, I mean, I, I have an application called Local, which runs on my Mac, which enables me to create a website in two minutes, and I can import uh, a new, you know, a backed up site into it, find the one single post, and then extract that one particular post. But in other words, a full backup contains everything. How do you find the one thing you want? Well, update, I, I don't know the exact details of updraft. Uh, the plugin, but it may well have a setting which says just back up posts or just back up certain posts because there, there are plugins that enable you to selectively back up. Can I show you what it, it does show? Okay, but it, it, it's too late now though because you didn't, you only made a full site backup prior to the problem, right? Yeah. So your problem, you're not going to be able to get around your problem by doing okay, so the now because it's gone. These backups aren't going to be helpful. No, no. Another backup won't be helpful because the change has already been made. Within your backups, by one means or another, which is to say, um, a new site on a on, on an application like local or MAMP or something on a, on your own machine, where you're just doing it to get the one thing you're looking for, that one particular page is content. Okay. And you're not even looking for the whole page; you're just looking for the content of the page, right? that you'd be happy with that just to save yourself the trouble of rebuilding it. Um, and I assume that the images are still there in the media library, right? They are. Which is kind of weird, isn't it? I mean, if some process wiped out the page, why didn't wipe out the images while it was added? I mean, that would be the kind of thing to do. Yeah. But in any event, in any event, um, uh, we haven't talked at all about your theme or, or how you're working on this, but um, and subject to anything anybody else has to say, including Mike, who could unmute himself and, and jump in wherever you like, Mike. But the, the point here, though, <laughs> is that if we're, if we're talking about one particular page is blown up or gone wrong, but it's the only page, yeah. then I don't think I would look to a sort of a site-wide problem, but rather a, a page-specific problem. And... Um, and and just you know either recover it from from a backup, which laborious as it is, can only be done by creating a new site from the backup and then doing a selective backup of just posts and just posts or just just pages rather. But this page in particular, if possible. So in fact, Google Google, Google um, recover single page from site backup. 
and see okay. what Google has to say as to a technique, because that's what you want to do, right? But the content of the page in question all resides in a row in a database table, right? Um, at least before the change. Yeah, it, it, it can be worse than just a row as well. But the one thing I do know is we got some uh, some stuff hacked a few years ago, and I was able to do a partial restore using GoDaddy, and it put back the pages I sort of filtered it by. So uh, basically, I was able to do a lot a partial restore using the utilities that are on GoDaddy on their on their backups and restore. I just sent you a link to the website, and again, it's it's pretty simple and we're basically just trying to pass on information so you can see yeah. the kinds of things yeah um I, i'm again i'm dealing with issues where someone has already started it and i'm trying to figure out what this yeah. person did and with my limited knowledge trying to figure out how yeah. to move forward with it so um dan, dan if i could just yeah of course my thought here one thing I learned, because I came in knowing a whole lot about websites and nothing about WordPress, um, was I learned the backup that comes from my hosting provider. Okay. Because their backup has tools, and it was only when I got attacked and I had to put better security on that I actually dove into it and, and learned it properly. Okay. But once I had then done that, I basically felt a whole lot safer. But trying to do my own local backup was a waste of time because, as Robin was saying, like you end up with a, a, a PHP file or you end up with a, a SQL file, but you have no way of knowing what records you need. So it's however, no however, however, as I mentioned, whether the plugin is a backup plugin, a migration plugin, or a staging plugin, they all contain the capability to, yes. depending on how good they are or if they're sophisticated enough, take WP staging, for example. It has very finely grain, fine grain control over both what you what you identify as what you want to back up or save um, or send to the production site, and it comes right down to individual tables uh, in the database and periods of time for the tables. Yeah. Yeah. So now the problem with WP staging is that the best version of that is the paid one, which is like a hundred plus bucks US, uh, but it does have a free version. Um, now, just while I think of it, Dan, as a as a uh, a thought for the future, just to be helpful, is that there are plugins which enable the site, the things that happen on the site, to be documented and logged. Some kind of log. An activity monitor, for example, or an audit plugin, or I think it was Victor or somebody just put in page revisions if active. Um, yeah. So, in other words, there are plugins to help you monitor what's going on in the site and it might not be a bad idea just to have one of those running okay. um, on the off chance that there's more going on in the site than you're being told or aware of mm. um <laughs> so it's kind of like you know yeah nobody's ever broken in nobody locks their front doors but you know maybe just try it for a while on the off chance it might help I, I still think it's a hiccup because to be honest, if somebody was actually going on and say maliciously trying to do something on the site, why would they take the content from one page and put it on another page? But, but, anyway. but it could be it could be somebody just opened the page by mistake and then you know hit like in a Unix system, if you hit RM space star, you've just completely destroyed the brain and all the files of your Unix yeah. system. And nobody in their right mind would do that, but if for some reason you thought that was like opening room number star in the calendar you were hoping to access, uh, you know, you do uncold full damage just through pure ignorance. Well, I think, that's I, think that's, I think that's what I've done. Some Something I've done on the system. Uh, but you know something? That's kind I, of random, you know, random in the sense that the chance of finding something you've done that created this weird set of circumstances um it, it may not be worth finding out it may not matter it may just be something that if it was random then it isn't going to happen again can i ask you about wordpress 6.3 before, before we, go? we just before we get into that yeah um, uh victor did suggest the page revision so why not just revert back to the previous version of the page how do i yeah, do that, that? Work. well wait a sec wait a sec first you'd have to do a little bit of research and learn 
that WordPress has a revision tracking mechanism built in that's turned on by default and that in theory enables you to go back to a previous version okay. of a, a page and um, replace the current version with that earlier version. Okay. And that's called that sounds good. Uh, page revisions or revision tracking. But it, um, the best thing to do is to sort of just learn a bit about how that mechanism works because those controls aren't sort of obvious and exposed to the casual user, right? But they're there, just like, um, what do you call it? What's the one that's like autosave, for example, which, which combined with revision tracking can mean you get a ton of useless entries in your database because every two, three, four minutes, it's going to make a back, it's going to uh, auto save that will gen that will trigger a revision being documented, which will mean, you know, more sort of wasted space in the database. You should control when you note a revision okay. so that you have in your head, oh, well, that was like a day's work, uh, all in that one sort of revision. So if I, if I restore the revision, well, then I'm jumping back a day in time. I mean, only you would know that, right? By paying attention to your revisions and saving steps. But that's a terrific suggestion. If it was from Victor and Drew, uh, thank you. Um, I personally don't make any use of it, but um, <laughs> it's, it's built in. Um, so start off by, you know, look, Google um, page revisions or, or revision tracking or cleanup revisions or whatever. And you'll sort of dig into that sort of vein of knowledge. Uh, just by the by, you could also go to a site called wpbeginner.com. Okay. And put in revision or revision tracking or whatever. I suggest that site because it's geared for uh, novices and does a pretty good job, uh, you know, in terms of the quality and credibility and so on. The one caveat is that. Um, Anything they recommend, like a plugin or something or a service, just bear in mind that somebody bought this well-regarded site um, and uses it to promote products which don't therefore have the credibility and authority of the what the site used to be. I actually got stung by it. By um, When they gave a rave review of this plugin, I thought, well, gee, I'm going to try that. <laughs> and I found out later when I was unimpressed. Well, I've started going plugin. through uh, LinkedIn Learn uh, courses and yep. started doing the WordPress courses there. Uh, WordPress, WordPress 6.3. Yeah, what about I that? I notice that when I go on my page, my dashboard, it says I'm on 6.2.2. Yep. Uh, how do I move to 3? Oh, well, if you go there. to your dashboard, <laughs> if you go to your dashboard, <laughs> if you okay. go to the dashboard for your site. Okay. You click on that, and there should be usually the second entry in the list is the update link. When you click on that, uh, it will display you know a, any pending WordPress update or and or any plugins, a and it's just gathering them all there together in one place because you could get the same info from several other places. But now I take it you don't have WordPress on auto update. I don't know. Okay, there's I a don't setting. Know the previous. See, the, again, the, I, I right. jumped okay, in. Okay, no problem. No problem. There's a default, this, the this default setting for WordPress. Year. The default setting for WordPress is auto update the core. I'm just showing you my screen. So right. here's WordPress now? updates. Pay attention now because this is the answer to the question. So when there's a new version comes out, if you have auto update on, then it will be updated automatically. If you turn auto update off, then I think it still tells you when there's a security update available, or it may even do the security updates automatically. Um, but now let's see, let me just, I can't see that page very well. Is that, is that your dashboard page? Uh, okay, down, down where it says current version 622. The last in. check. Why doesn't it say it doesn't give you an option? I'm surprised. Oh, okay. Take that's that's what I've been looking for. I thought I was missing something. No, but I would normally in. give you uh, 
a link to do the update. Anytime it tells you the current version, it wants you to be up to date. And therefore, um, you can go to the top of the page. Okay, uh, so what's the whose message is this first one? A content delivery network. Is it Cloudflare or what? Are you using the managed WordPress hosting platform? Oh, it's GoDaddy. It, oh, so GoDaddy. this is probably their managed I, it, version. To be honest, uh, Victor, until tonight, I didn't know it was GoDaddy because, again, I didn't set this up. So uh, now I know where the files are being hosted. So if, that's something. If you're but, using if you're using GoDaddy, they are very conservative on WordPress updates. And if you dig into their literature, it says, you know, we've got version eight of, of WordPress available, but we're not giving it to you. But if you really, really are stupid enough, you can do it, install it yourself and they tell you how to do it. But they tend to be a, a version or a half a version behind okay. because so many people crash when they get the new version and they're okay. out. Okay. So I, what, I would, what I would suggest is that you um, confirm by looking at the GoDaddy documentation that they are holding up WordPress versions okay. for some period of time, you know, a week, two weeks, or three weeks, or whatever, uh, and then make it available. And they're preventing their client sites from getting the auto update. Like, because yours doesn't even make any reference to the update being available. So that suggests oh. that, that GoDaddy is tweaking your site, all its sites so that they don't have the option to update WordPress except by some tedious process. Now, as I vaguely recall, the health check page has a update link as well, where it tells you what the current version is. But the two places that normally uh, a site provides is on the page we're looking at right now, at the bottom where we were before, that normally has the update link. And then uh, in the left sidebar, if you go back to the top of the page, um, right under dashboard, oh, there it is, updates. If you click updates. Uh, that's the page we're on. Uh, no, oh, wait a sec. Oh, sorry, if you click the dashboard page, you get a different page that also has that a link typically, which who cares now, it, but the updates page is where I, I, my own experience, this is where WordPress core updates from for my sites appear because I turn it off. I turn off auto updates for core and decide myself in each case. So therefore, you know, I'm used to seeing that button uh, in several places, right one of them being towards the bottom of this page, but at the top of the updates page. Do, 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 do. Now, just so you know where it says Elementor data updater. Uh, Click here to run it now. I wonder is this, this? So, yeah. I don't know anybody who's gone through the update on Elementor data, on the on the, the update of data in Elementor. But when they say run it now, are they talking about Elementor itself, like start up to edit a page or create a page or whatever, or is it um, just to do the update process for the database? Update process for the database for Elementor itself. Because it says it's running now, so why would you click to run it now when it's already running in the background? I guess it's running in the foreground. If it's taking a while, if it's taking a while, I guess that's what it means. It means click here to run it in the foreground now. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's what we'll interpret it to mean. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, and I, and I would take that jack. first message within the next fourteen days as a GoDaddy message. That it's unfortunate they don't identify themselves because just throwing a message in like that is a poor practice to say the least. Um, <laughs> but I, there's there's got to be some pretty clear documentation for you on GoDaddy about how updating to the core of WordPress works. You did mention um, Robin. You did mention um, site health. He could check tools on the yes. tools. And see if, if it's available. Now, what's that? That's in settings, right? No, tools. 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 Okay, tools, site health. And then, is it informa the information tab? Yeah. Scroll down. Just scroll down. Okay. See, it doesn't even recommend. Whoa. 
the update. <laughs> Boy, that's a pretty cool job of GoDaddy going in there and uh, yeah, we don't like the way your co WordPress code's running on your site. Let's change it and not tell them. <laughs> Actually, GoDaddy had a terrible reputation. Like, you know, I didn't pick them. <laughs> no, no. Let's take uh, let's take those guys out and shoot them. Kind of reputation. Yeah. When they were when they when they started out as a domain name registrar, they were widely reviled for their marketing tactics, and um, then they expanded and so on. And then this is like five, six, seven years later. Now they're a fairly significant host, and people say that oh, well, they cleaned up their act. They're really trustworthy guys now. But I'm not sure about that in this regard. Now, scroll down, and it's going to tell us all kinds of details. So under the WordPress one, the first one, it should tell us the 622, right? And it's not saying ready to be updated. No, it says there's 63 is there, but uh, I can't have it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what's happened. So, yeah, I would definitely learn a bit about GoDaddy hosting. Do you know if you're on a month-to-month -month basis or... You I find some twenty-year-long contract or something. Uh, I couldn't tell you if the company that set it up. I'm going to have to go back to them. Until tonight, I didn't actually notice. I noticed GoDaddy up in the upper left-hand corner and thought, okay, there, there. It's it's an ad for GoDaddy. I don't know if they own WordPress. And I I went in, and sure enough, that's who's hosting our files. So um, uh, I yeah. learned that tonight. Okay. Dan, there's an entirely separate login process to access GoDaddy. Yeah. You should find that and take a look at it. Well, now, different, anybody different know, control screen. What what does GoDaddy offer for managing accounts? Is it is it cPanel or, or there's what? two options? There's two what options. You have, right? You if you selected manage WordPress, it's not on cPanel. And I see along the title bar there. This yeah. is manage WordPress. Manage is not but you should be able to log into GoDaddy. You should try clicking that, that manage WordPress okay. process or WordPress and manage. see what okay. you get there, like hosting overview. And okay. then you can see uh you may have to log in, right? <laughs> so you yeah. may have to sign up with them and sort that out with the developers that created this with you. I'm gonna have to go back to them. This yeah, but see. once you log in here. You should be able to see a dashboard where you can check your WordPress version and you can do all kinds of things that you can't do from a WP admin. Okay. I'm not sure if there's anything we've been discussing, though, that would be available in the account that isn't available in WordPress. What the account has is lots of valuable information that has nothing to do with the site as a WordPress site but just relates to the site as a content management system. Yeah. You know, like how much are my files occupying in storage? You know, what's my CPU usage level? You know, how much RAM has my PHP been assigned? Stuff like that. Plus all the stuff like backups and so on. But um, it is definitely important that you become knowledgeable about the way in which your particular account is being run by GoDaddy, because yeah. that will answer questions like the current one why can't I update to 6.3? But the other thing is that unless 6.3 has something you're really, really hot for right now, uh, well, a few weeks doesn't matter. Um, well, all I've seen is a few YouTube videos talking about the wonders of 6.3. Right. So, but, but by the same token, I mean, but as I say, unless one of those or more of those wonders happens to be something that you just can't live without right now. Yeah. No, there is. Waiting. I mean, the... Um, I've been a Mac or an Apple customer for decades. And even with them on the Mac side, in terms of operating systems, I don't take an update when it's released. I wait weeks and I view you know, forum threads just to check yeah. to make sure nobody's complaining about problems. Uh, the only thing on iOS that I take on my iPhone automatically are security updates, the small ones, the dot, dot ones. Yes. Anything major, I wait at least a month and probably until the dot one version of a major release comes out because they don't have significant enough improvements to motivate me to take any risk. So why why not let a million people test drive 
what I'm going to update with and then let me know by their silence that it's okay. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. Uh, for, for me, the, the issues have all been it doing weird things. And, uh, you know, for example, this page with this menu at the top, sometimes it appears and sometimes it doesn't. And I, I don't have the expertise to understand why it's not, why it's doing that. So, well, one of the things that, that would be really helpful for you to understand, but it would involve, I don't know, half a dozen hours of that learning WordPress webinars and sessions, but it's the, a kind of a fundamental notion to understand the way WordPress works, to, to look at this and say to yourself, that what we're looking at right now, this page has a template somewhere and that yeah. controls what's in the area between the header and the footer. Yeah. And the header and the footer are controlled as separate template parts. Yeah. And therefore, when you wish to edit this page, you cannot edit the header and the footer because those being templates have to be edited with the site editor. And so distinguishing between the content area of a page or a post and the header, footer, sidebar, and other parts of the thing are, are pretty central to just the basic notion of the way WordPress works. So if you're looking at something in the header, which is that green area, yeah. or, or in, in particular, there's like four components there that are standardized and they may look different and they may be in different positions, but they're all the same yeah. data, site logo, site name, nav bar, social icons. Um, that's, you know, that's it. Here you're looking for the navigation component which in Elementor will be some, there'll be, if that's been done in Elementor, well, that's one thing, but there will be, you're in the block, you have a block theme. So that means that you go to the site editor where it lists all, it has one link for templates, another link for template parts. Actually, they changed the name in 6.3 and um, template parts aren't called template parts, but it's something really similar. Yeah. And you'll know you're in the right place when you click on it and it shows you header, footer, sidebar, whatever. Um, and that's how you get find your way into um, the menu. If so when I pull easy. this page up on my PC, I have the green bar, the header at the top. I'm looking down now at my iPhone, looking at the same page and that header isn't there. Okay, that may be the result of the responsiveness, so-called, of the theme in use, uh, uh, block themes are designed as a rule so that the layout of everything responds to the screen size of the device being on which it's displayed. Therefore, a phone being a smaller display, the theme responds and chops everything down, like just reduces the width. So if you had a row with three cards or tiles on it, right? Or a menu with six items going across, uh, two things would happen. Number one, the, that row of tiles would turn out to be a column of tiles, yeah. one under the other, which is fine. They look great. Yeah. And then the navigation menu may well be turned into the hamburger menu. But see, on, this, on my mobile phone, there is no menu anymore. Yeah, yeah but maybe there's so, a hamburger menu. There's so, no hamburger menu. So what I've seen on the site is that the header is built with Elementor, and I can read here in the in the code, Elementor hidden mobile, Elementor hidden tablet. So your whole header will not show on your mobile and your tablets. That's how it was designed. Right. So in other words, they give you a separate way, or, or the mobile version of that nav menu it can be tweaked or changed or designed by you and maybe somebody's just turned it off. Okay. So I'm going to have to figure out where that is. Okay. Actually, that's not that hard to figure out, but it's also something that's kind of basic. Now, if you just simply, what I've done here is the quick way to sort of cheat and find out what happens in terms of the responsiveness of the theme. Uh, it's just simply to detach the tab which is displaying something, like, right. you know, a page, detach the tab so it's a standalone window with one tab, and then just reduce the width of it 
down to the width that looks like it'd be suitable for a mobile device. Okay. And you'll see the layout changes as you reduce the width. And that's what's referred to. Now, when I do that, I get the hamburger menu. Right? Um, Would you like to see? Victor, did you, did you see something? I was trying to, there's a quick fix to that. If, if I have a minute, if sure. you scroll down to the bottom towards your window, yeah, yes. The left one. Yes, no, no, the one, the layers. Yeah, click on that navigator. Yes, click on the section, the first section on at, at the top. Your navigator, can you see your navigator? Yeah, click on, no, the first one, yes. Click on that. This one? Yes, click. Okay, then at, on the left. Yeah. Move, move your cursor to the left, edit section, where you have edit section, advanced. Click on the advanced. And um, somewhere below, responsive, yes. Scroll down, responsive. And then uncheck the tablet and the portraits. Uh, uncheck the, the pink ones. Good. And then update. But Victor, just out of curiosity, were you not seeing the hamburger menu on the mobile version? No. Because, and I won't refresh the page, but if I were to display the home page in, you know, reduced width Chrome window, bang, the hamburger menu is there. No, it's not showing on mine. The whole, the well, whole it, it's it's interesting now. Um, I, I think you can probably see. Let me see if I can put this close. Uh, it's not going to be. You're not going to be able to see it. Anyways, at the top there is now a green box that has um, the logo and a tiny little menu, a tiny little menu uh, hamburger and the two icons. So. That is what it's supposed to be. It's so tiny, though, but I, I, I think it probably works. Okay, Victor, thank you. Yeah, I, actually, I, I don't know why the settings changed. But it, was, it wasn't doing that before. So, like okay. I say, and, and I didn't even know how to get in there. So, anyways, I'm, listen, I've taken too much of your time, but I appreciate the help. Dan, before you go, there is one more thing that you'll need to know in addition to logging into your... Uh, um, website host, you also need to be able to control your domain name, 65,000 trees. That I've got control of. Oh, I was the one that set up the domain name. So yeah. uh, we're under reg.ca. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I do have control over that. Okay, um, good. I'm the one paying the bill. Uh, yeah, that's C-I-R-A, by the way. But, you know, we know what you mean. No, the domain, the registrar is, is reg, it's reg dot ca. That's right. CIRA is the registry. CIRA, uh, reg is the registrar. Okay. Another issue to deal with. So no, like no, they... you don't need to worry about CIRA. Uh, as long as you're, as long as you can log into reg dot ca, you're good. I, I never even heard of reg. Dot, dot, into this what is reg .ca anyway? They're just a registrar like GoDaddy yeah. or, or, or Network Solutions or any of the 10,000 other domain registrars. Yes. I realize I've got a long ways to go, but I, I appreciate your help tonight, gentlemen. Really do. And I think there was a young lady with us too. Yeah, but I think uh, we're running out of time. Okay. She it was If it was Lori, she dropped right. off saying that, you know, sorry, she had to go. Okay. And it's, uh, but it's almost 845 and uh, thanks again for the help. I'm hungry. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. But listen, before we go, the standard sort of thing that I mentioned uh, at least once during the session is if we've assisted, it would be helpful and beneficial to us if you put a comment on the meetup page for this event. Okay. You know, where, you, where you RSVP and just say, think of it from the point of view of I want to encourage people like me to take a chance and come to a session and learn something. So what do you think you need to say to them? Hey guys, I came, I was a little worried that, you know, I don't know anything, but <laughs> but I got something out of it, not the solution I wanted, but you know, I enjoyed it. I'm gonna go back there. That is the sort of thing that would be helpful in a kind of a mini testimonial. If you guys would do that, that would be much appreciated. All right. Sure. Thank Thanks you. again, everyone. Okay, guys, signing off. We'll see you all next month. All right. and, uh, it's great to be here. Yeah.
Good night. Yeah. Have to come Good, night. Good night. Good night. And thanks, Victor. My pleasure. So, how's it going, Robin? Okay. <laughs>